Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial today, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to marble your own killer candles. To get started, you're just going to need a few items and the first one obviously is some pillar candles. So I've got some soya based pillar candles and I've got some paraben based pillar candles and you can do whatever shape or size that you want to do. And then you're going to need some gloves just to protect your fingers from the dye. You don't have to do this, the dyes will wash off your hands, but obviously just to save you that hassle, having some disposable gloves are, is really helpful. Then some containers that are big enough to place your candles into. So depending on how thick you're doing your candle or how tall it is, you need to be able to fully submerge your candle into the water. Um, unless you only want to go halfway up, you need to be able to have enough space that you can fully dip your candle into a container. I'd also recommend using containers that you're not too precious about because they are going to get stained um, and ruined basically these are going to be marbling containers from now on and then obviously we're going to need some colors to dye our candles so today I am using two different ones I have got the magic marble from Krul Krul it's K-R-E-U-L I'm not I'm not sure how to pronounce that, I'm really sorry because I'm pretty sure that's not it. And then also from Easy Marble. So you're going to want to make sure that your marbling dyes are not water-based because this will not work with water-based marbling dyes. And I will show you exactly what happens when you do use water-based marbling dyes. But when I first saw this technique, I just grabbed the marble dyes that I had on hand, which are obviously that I use in my water base, and I use them for like dyeing papers and stuff like that. These are great dyes, but just not for this technique. It will not grip to the wax at all. So don't waste your time doing that. You need to get dyes that are either oil based or um, some are petroleum based. You need to find dyes like that because it's gonna grip to the wax. The first step that we've got to do, and it's a super simple one, is we just need to fill up our containers with water. Now, I personally prefer using like warm water. I found when I use cold water, it sets my marbling paints faster. So having the warm water just stops them from setting as fast. Um, but you definitely don't need to use hot water. Just some nice warm water that you can dip your hands into and not burn them. When you do fill up your containers with water, make sure that you leave a little bit of a gap because obviously when we submerge our candles into that, it's going to bring our water level up and we don't want that overflowing onto our table. So you just want to make sure you don't fill your containers up the whole way with warm water. And I've got two different size containers here. And the reason behind that is that even though I could easily fit this candle the whole way into this one container what you're going to find is as you dip it because it has such a large surface area at the bottom and you've only got about a centimeter and a half the whole way around this you're going to end up with a candle with most of the marbling like this one all on the bottom because it took up a really big part of the surface area so with bigger candles like this you want to go with a bigger container so that way when you dip it like this it doesn't completely fill up the whole surface area just on the bottom now this is still a pretty cool candle i think because it kind of has a little bit of an ombre effect where the marbling is majority of it is on the bottom and fades up but obviously if you want to fully color the candle, picking the right size container really makes a big difference with this. Now I've got some different candles here and I'm going to show you a few different ways. So first up, put some gloves on because this will stain your fingers. Um, doesn't matter what kind of gloves you put on, just protecting your fingers. Now I've got some metallic ones. And I've also just got some base like primary color ones. Make sure you give them a really good shake, especially your metallic ones, because you will find most of the metallic pigment will sit on the bottom. And when you do drip it out, you're not gonna get a lot of sparkle or shine. So give your metallic pigments a really good shake up. They all need a really good shake when you first start using them, but especially the metallic ones. 
So first up, I am probably going to do quite a basic one. We're just going to drip in, super simple. A few colours, add some gold in. I'm going to add some white in. Now, even though my candle is white, this is just going to help create some negative space and not have it completely full of color. And now I'm just going to grab a skewer and give it a little swirl to make sure I get a really beautiful pattern. And then I'm going to grab my pillar candle and we're just going to submerge it in to my color. For this pillar candle, I picked this one because I only want it to go halfway up because I want to create a really cool effect. But if I go to pull it out now, I've still got some of the dye sitting around on the top and that's going to re-dye back down. So all you need to do is either grab your skewer, pull it away, pick it all up on your skewer just like that, and then you can lift it back out. And we've got a really cool marble bottom of my candle. So that creates some really cool negative space of the candle at the top without the marbling and then just at the bottom. On our bigger side, I'm going to add some green. We're obviously going to add more color because we're using a larger surface area. So you can add quite a few drops in. Now, if you ever put your inks in and you realize that the pattern's not right, all you need to do is grab some paper towel and wipe it across the surface area and it will just pick up all of that marble color. And you can start fresh. We're going to grab our pillar candle and I'm just holding onto the wick here, but you could also place your skewer in and place it down like that, depending on where you want the majority of your color to go. And this time, as I'm placing it in this time, I'm just going to give the candle a little bit of a twirl. And now I have a really cool marble effect on my candle that's kind of going in a slight swirl pattern. So because I dropped that one, it hasn't turned out great. Some parts are cool, but some parts are missing. So what you can do before it fully sets, add a little bit of alcohol spray, get some paper towel, and it wipes straight off so you haven't ruined your candle. You can just keep giving it a bit of a spray, paper towel, and wipe it off and start again. So I feel like this can be quite foolproof because if you've done a colors that you don't like, take it off before you add your candle in. If you accidentally drop your candle like I do, you can still wipe it all off and start fresh. So don't feel like you always have to dip it straight down. You can always dip it on a diagonal, especially if you've got bigger candles. Um, I find it works a lot better because you get more color going across the whole surface area. And look how stunning and vibrant that is. It's so beautiful. We've got some really beautiful and unique finish candles here and you can get these marbling colors in a few different, you've just got to shop around. 
I found for Australia the best place is Amazon, so there's going to be a link in my description if you want to find the colours that I've used today plus a few others. I did find it was quite hard, not many art supply stores sell this particular kind of marbling colour, so definitely go and check out my Amazon link if you just want to find the ones that I've used today that you know work very well. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe and consider hitting that notification bell so that way you get notified every single time I post a new video. And I post a new video every single week, all to do with different arts and crafts. So thank you guys so much for watching.